Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California, and today I am going to start working on my chair garden with all my totes there. I'm going to show you on how I refurbish a tote when I'm getting ready to plant. That's what it looked like a few minutes ago, and that's what it looks like now. Yes, I had something growing in there last year, but now it's ready for this year. There are so many ways to do it. You could just start from the top, or you could take everything out. This one... I did not water it during the winter, so it got really hard. And when I started digging, I found all kinds of stuff in there, you'll see. So I decided to take almost everything out, not quite everything, but almost everything, and start all over, which is great because I had all that soil to work with as I added plant matter from my garden and kitchen scraps. And you'll see how I did it, and you can decide if you want to do it that way too. And for that whole well, you'll see what I did. My mistake. I wasn't paying attention when I had the camera, and well, you'll see. But you know what? It's okay. Now you'll know when we go back later. Oh, I remember that tote. It has a hole. So let's get into it, and you're going to see the raw footage as I was working this morning in my chair garden. Enjoy! Okay, there are different ways to refurbish totes. Now, this tote or container... I let this go. This is my mistake. We had all that rain and then I didn't come back and water this and see how it got hard and it pulled away. I think for me, the best thing to do, because look how good it is. Everything I put in there is gone. There's a little bit of eggshells left. And that's okay. Remember, you don't care if it all breaks down. You don't want to have a solid mass. So today I'm going to do a radical change on this 18 gallon tote. I'm going to just lift all this out. See how it just is, it's not just root bound. I didn't take care of it. And I'm going to take all that out. I saw an earwig. I was going to throw them on the ground. If I see them, I will. The best thing for me to do would be to go through and get most of it out. I don't have to get it all out, but get it away from the holes that it's, you know, the water drains out of. And the reason it pulled away is I haven't been watering this one because there was nothing in it. Everything had died back for the winter. So you take this out. Put it somewhere. I love a wheelbarrow. But if you don't, you can use another tote. An empty tote works good. And start breaking that up. The soil is fine. Just has to be re rejuvenated. And we want to bring back, oh, look at this, an avocado pit. They're fine. You know what? Just break the, the bottom. The leaves are wonderful. The pits try to grow. And that's all right. You just compost it back in. Look, it's gone now. Now, this is what you want to do. You want to break it apart. Don't worry about the roots that's in there from last year. This is all going to turn into your soil. This is what you want. Look at this. Is this beautiful? This is all free. This came from everything I put in there. And even though I neglected it all winter, this is all going to make me wonderful soil. They just lift it out. This is what concerns me. See those little green dots? That came out of soil I bought last year, bagged soil. It looks like they're plastic. I've seen them all different sizes. Some of them were quite big. Look like a hunk of plastic. When you get things, see all that? Here's more, see this one's blue. When you get soil and you buy it, depending on where they got it from, if they got it from trash companies, all it's done is put through a shredder and you never know what's in it. So keep that in mind. It's not gonna hurt anything, it's just gonna sit there but I'm letting you know I've found that in some of the cheaper soil I have bought. I have not found that in miracle Grow, but I did find it in other soils. I bought some off-brands last year and they were not good. And I probably put some off-brands in here, but it'll be fine. So now we break it apart and we start the whole process again. If I left it, and I could, I think, see, there's so much of it. If I left it, it would be fine. But the thing is, oh, I just made a hole in my toad with the shovel. No, I did that myself. Okay, be careful when you do it. I wasn't paying attention. I was looking at my camera. No biggie. Here's the thing. If I left it, I wouldn't get, I don't think, as good of a production, but it might be fine. I could have just layered the top. But in this case, I think I am going to go through. Going to layer all new on the bottom. Sticks and green. You want to mix it green and brown. It could be papers, kitchen scraps, toilet paper rolls, but get some green in there and get some brown in there and then put all this back on top. And I'm going to have a fabulous garden growing again. Be careful when you're working because that was my bad. I took the shovel and I pushed it real hard and I just snapped my tote. So I'm taking out stuff and I really didn't think there'd be anything in here. And look what I found. 
I found a poor little earthworm struggling in this hard mass. That's okay. We're going to put him back when we get this all layered and he's gonna be one happy fellow. And you know what? I bet you there's some earthworms under this bucket. Let's see. Oh, yes, there are. We're gonna come back, see that? And I'm gonna look around. Look, 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 look. Okay, we don't, you know what? I might grab them now because all that's going back before they go back. They disappear. You bother them, they go straight back into the ground. Yeah, 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 I gotcha. I'm gonna just put him here. And I'm gonna make sure all that there goes back into there as soon as I get this emptied out. Maybe I'll put a band-aid on that. Remind myself, be careful while you work. Look at this. I just pulled this out of here. Look, they're hiding down there. They're trying to get somewhere because there's no food for them. Oh, I've gotta do this quickly. I didn't realize there's so many earthworms in here. Let me get this out as a whole clump. And I'm gonna make sure all that gets back in there because now I know there's earthworms in there. I'm gonna loosen that up and then get this built up. This is about all I'm gonna take out. You know, it's the same tote. I'm not fooling you or anything. I don't do that. And as I've been digging around here, look at this. There has been earthworms. That's a little tiny one, but I just saw some big ones. They're everywhere in here. So I, oh, there, see, there's one. He's inside, they're caked in here, they're kind of trapped. That's why they don't look so happy. They should be nice and pink. So I'm going to now, so here's another one. I've got to do this today. I can't leave this, because if I left it, what would happen now is if I watered this and they had a little bit of moisture, they would leave. And I don't want them to leave. Look, there's more in here. Look at that. And there's a whole bunch. I mean, I was going through this and I can't believe. See, there's they're stuck in the soil because it wasn't watered. Shame on me. See, we're not perfect, but we're going to fix this situation. So I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start putting dry matter on the bottom by the holes. It just works for me. You do it whatever way you want, but it just works really, really good for me. Look at that. There's stuff alive in there. And this is stuff that I... Oh, let's put that back. There's just earthworms there. This is just stuff I've been collecting all winter. And look how it's dried out. What I wanted to show you. Where's my shovel? Here's my shovel. Even in the bucket, just a bucket, look at this. Look how it's breaking down. I've already created soil in there just by having it sit there. So now let's get that taken care of. We can throw toilet paper rolls in here. We're gonna have real happy worms. Whatever I've got here, I've got kitchen scraps in here. Everybody's collecting toilet paper rolls for us. Look at that. There's kitchen scraps. I wanna put that a little closer to the top, the kitchen scraps. I want the earthworms to move around. So let's bring this over here. And this is how we refurbish the toe. There's so many ways. This is not like, oh, I have to do it this way. Yeah, if it didn't look that bad, I could have just left it. And I want it, see how they're moving around now? Like, Wait a minute, what is she doing? Now, a lot of times I do stuff the toilet paper rolls. It actually gives them a place to feed and a place to live. And that is a veggie roll. My granddaughter came up with the name. I said, what do you think this looks like? She said, it looks like a veggie roll. You don't have to do them all. Especially I'm one-handed right now. I'm just, I don't have a tripod or anything. I just started working and I thought, you know, I'll show you what I'm doing. So I've got eggshells. Don't worry that the eggshells don't break down that quick. It's calcium. You want a slow release. Slow release is good. I do like stuffing my toilet paper rolls. And they're going to be like, oh my gosh, the world was coming to an end and now we're in heaven. So I'm going to get a lot of that in there and then I'm going to put that soil back quickly. Before I get to the top, I'll put in the kitchen scraps with a little bit of more toilet paper rolls and then I'll give this a good watering. It will drain good now. And we'll move that soil. So I'm just going to simply take this soil here very gently and start moving the soil. So it's a little bit mixed up. You want it mixed up. You don't want it all the same. And let's see. You know what? I can do that. Let me see what's in here. Yeah, there's a little bit of the roly polies. They don't want too many roly polies. Yeah, we can let them go free. Yeah, we can let you go free. We don't want too many. As long as I have leaf matter in there, they won't eat my plants. I don't usually put that. Ooh, I don't know what that is. Okay, well, whatever it is, we'll put it in the next tote. 
It's a cocoon of some sort. Could be anything. And we'll let some of them go. They'll come to the top and you can put a toilet paper roll on top. And then what you can do is check it. If it's damp, they go inside and you can remove them. They're not gonna do really any harm, but if you only had one baby plant growing and no leaf, leaf matter in there, they would go, okay, I guess we have to eat that. All right, so let me get this layered. You know how I do it, no different. Keep putting it in because I want to break this up and then I'm going to top all the soil back and get this going. Okay, I've got sow thistle everywhere. I can't leave it all. I've got a lot of sow thistle planted in different places. See, it's around the meadow. So I've got to get rid of this. I put all my leaf matter in there and now I'm going to use the sow thistle. Now, roots are fantastic because they've got a lot of things in there critters that were living in there. So I'm going to leave the roots. Now sometimes I'll break this up. Because I'm one-handed right now, I'm not going to break it up. See, I broke this one. So I've only got the bottom there. I say break it up. It will break down quicker, but you know what? There's so many earthworms in here, they're going to just go and have a party as soon as I leave. So don't worry about the roots. They're not going to grow. Mix it up. You know what? Maybe we'll just take this. Let's see if we could do this one-handed without breaking my tote. Hold on. Okay, we did it. I want to put this back. This one had a lot of earthworms. Where's my shovel? Okay, there are peppers in here. There's mold. Look at that. Oh, mold. No worries. It's all going to disappear. Okay, we know there's earthworms in here because we saw them. Put the stick off to the side. Sticks are okay. And it doesn't matter if they don't break down that quickly because oh, it's not hurt our earthworms because we need them all and they are going to be so happy when I water this and the water drains out and it's going to be damp and they can move around. They don't want to be underwater, but they most certainly need water. I'll get some more leaf in here and leaf matter. It's going to be so cool. And just put that around. This has got native soil in it, which is great. Our soil is clay, so it's got all kind of nutrients and minerals in there. Let's see, I can just put it I'll put it there. It's not going to grow. Do not worry about it. It's more, it's more uh, colored, tree colored. Even look, oh, Swiss chard. We don't want this. Let's break this up and put that there. I'm going to have to put the phone down in a minute. I can't do this one handed, but I want you to get the idea. There's no rhyme or reason except for, oh, let's not pull our carrot out. It's not ready yet. Let's see clean off anything. You know, there's no rhyme or reason how you can do it. You do it whatever way it's going to work. It's all going to disappear. You want to chop it up, chop it up. I will tell you one thing. Don't put it in a blender. I've seen some people do videos and go, look, I blended up everything and I poured it in there. Our microbes and our worms are not babies. They don't need their food strained and completely pureed. They actually want it like this. They live like this they will come in here and see how the stem is curved see how there's a curve there they'll get in there and they'll lay under there and they'll munch 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 and they'll eat it away they don't want it blend it don't blend it you want to blend it you can blend it i don't even think it would work that well mother nature does not blend i do it her way her way actually is simply drop and grow see look at my poor tomato plants all the tomato plants they did not make it through the winter. That's all right. See, now I've got brown, I've got green. I've got a really good mix. I would do really good if I was doing this with two hands instead of one. But you've got the idea. Now what I'm gonna do in a couple minutes is I'm gonna, I think I have some more kitchen scraps, which is no different than stuff you're collecting from your garden. I mean, what is kitchen scraps? Think about it, what is it? You bring something in from the garden, be it lettuce, be it collard, be it Swiss chard, and then you trim off what you want to eat and you throw in a bucket the stuff you don't. Hence, same thing that's coming from the garden. Okay, so maybe you don't have eggs you're cracking here. But anything you're not gonna eat, oh, we'll take the snail and he can go find another home. So anyways, anything you're not gonna eat is what goes into your kitchen scraps. Well, it's the same thing from the garden. And as I was saying, even here, whatever you're not gonna eat, well, I have to plant, take care of this. You know, when we get serious about gardening, if the leaf is no good and you look at it and think, well, I'm not gonna eat it, why would you leave it on there? Because the plant still has to take care of it. So if you take off the stuff that you're not gonna eat, 
that the plant is struggling to keep alive, it will grow bigger and better leaves. Let's see. So we got Swiss chard, we got collar leaves in here. And what do I have here? And keep in mind also that, let's see, I picked some more weeds. That when you dump things in here and you think, well, wait a minute, there's no real soil here. I'm gonna plant in this. I don't wanna take everything out. That's right, let's stick that there. It doesn't matter because it's all gonna move. As the critters and everything move around, it will move. Look at that. A piece of cardboard in there. I don't use a lot of cardboard. Some of you have asked. There's a little bit in here. A lot of cardboard has string fiber in there. And then you reach in there and get all the string and stuff. And sometimes there's tape. You don't see it. I don't use a lot of cardboard personally. You want to, you can't. For me, no. And sometimes I worry about too many dyes. Only because I don't know what they used. Most of the dye here is fine on paper because, think about it, they don't want a lawsuit if some kid got to the mail and chewed on the ads for the your grocery store or something. So they make sure a lot of that is soy. It's made of soy the ink. But on cardboard boxes, I don't know. So I don't use a lot of cardboard. But a little bit? Sure. This is pretty good. I think right now, let's see, we got another leaf down here I can pull off with hopefully not killing the plant one-handed. I don't usually do it one-handed like this. Okay. All right. Now I'm just going to take that soil. I think I'll leave this for another one. And I want to get all this quickly back in here because this is the stuff that came out and there are earthworms in there. And a little roly-poly. I'm going to put you on the ground. Set you free. Yay! You know what? He thinks I'm doing it a favor. <laughs> it's doing me a favor to throw him back on the ground because I don't want too many in there. All right, let's get this filled up. So now I'm done. I have a little bit of soil left because it's just I don't fill it all the way to the top. I can always add more soil as the plants are growing or more compost. I'm going to sprinkle this lightly with water, just a light mist, because there could be earthworms left in here. I'm not sure, but we are left with soil from last year. And that's it. Look how beautiful it looks. There are a few green pieces I see in there, but I'm going to have to live with that because it came out of some soil I bought. I don't recommend soil. I say if you're going to get soil, get a really good organic soil if you've got the money. I'm going to be honest. I don't. I don't have the money. Some of those bags, two cubic foot, one cubic foot can be anywhere 30, 40. I've seen them as high as 60, depending on the size of the bag. So you get what you want. I personally, I'm not endorsing them. I have nothing to do with them. I usually get the miracle Grow potting soil, the yellow bag. I haven't had any issues with that. Last year, I got some from grocery stores they had on sale for $3.50 a bag, and it turned out to be a nightmare they didn't grow. Another place that I personally will not get soil will be from recycling centers or your trash company. We only did it once, and once was enough. They compost, and they give that stuff away a lot of times. Keep in mind, that also can go to some of your cheaper companies, like maybe the soil I got from the grocery store. I don't know. And if they are breaking down, let's say grass from a golf course or grasses, because you know how you put it in your recycling bins, your trash cans, if they didn't know, and how are they going to know if you're, somebody's treating their grass or they've used any type of herbicide around, let's say they sprayed all their weeds with an herbicide to kill the weeds, some sort of weed killer, and then they composted it. Well, what they did is they put it in their green waste, then that gets composted. Some of that stuff can take six months to who knows how long to break down. You get it, you plant in it, and your plants don't grow. So I personally make my own soil. You saw what I did. Collect everything from around, whatever you can. I know some of you don't have it because you're just starting, but keep in mind, once you start, you're going to have plenty. As your plants, you know, have leaves, you're going to collect all that. Don't throw a single thing away. Collect toilet paper rolls, collect your kitchen scraps. But I haven't had any problems with miracle Grow. Now, there is no miracle Grow in here unless it went in there last year a little bit. So what I might do when I'm ready, I'm going to do it just like this. I might put some, you know, clippings of weeds that I've got because we do not spray anything. Cut that up and use that as a mulch on the top just a little bit. You don't want to cover it too much because you'll smother your soil. Everything's got to breathe. You don't want to put a lot of mulch on the top. I don't. But I may take a hole and dig a little hole when I put my plant in there. And maybe I will put a little bit of potting soil in there just because that's how it came from the nursery. I have some squash plants that I am 
you know, growing and planting around here that came from a nursery. And so it's used to that. And then once it starts to grow, it's going to set its roots in there and find everything I put in there and it's going to go wild. So you do it your way. But I put this here because it was just sitting here in one of these other containers and I'm going to water this and this will keep dampness underneath. You saw what happened with the bucket with all the earthworms and that's kind of another place. See, I'm going to have to deal with this. It's plastic. It's all through here and I have found big chunks too. By watering it that way, you have a, a great ecosystem going because things can go underneath if they want the dampness and if they don't want the dampness it's too damp they can go into the pot because there's a big hole on the bottom so they travel around and it's layering and a lot of times if I don't need to water this I could just water this and it will water everything in there so that's it you saw how easy it is and this is what you can do if you go back and you look at your container and go oh no I didn't take care of it all winter just refurbish it now again if it was fine I would have just put some more stuff on the top, gone ahead, got some more leaves from the garden or kitchen scraps, put a layer. And then if you've got another container, take from another container and throw it on top. Remember, kitchen scraps, leaves, paper, whatever you're putting in there to break down, coffee grinds, eggshells, it has to be covered. Because if it's not covered, nothing is going to break down on the top. Everything is just going to sit there. So you've got to remember, like the eggshells sitting on top here, they won't break down. It doesn't matter. Push them underneath because nothing is gonna to come to the top to eat them. Okay, maybe roly polies once in a while, but your earthworms, your microbes, that all works underneath. They live under the soil and the soil is their place where they have to be. So if you remember that, you're gonna do fantastic. And if you don't remember it, you'll figure it out as you go along. So with that, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. I think I'll go plant a zucchini in there soon. That'll be a nice start. So I'm back. And this is what I got because I was waiting for my seeds to grow, which are now growing. And this has got four in there. Look at those roots. So I'm going to hope that this zucchini, heirloom black zucchini, will make it. They're all in a clump. But you know what? At this stage, they seem to do okay. So I'm going to take one out, put this back, and get these planted somewhere else. Now, the only potting soil I'm going to use in here is just in this one spot because we've got all those leaves in there that have to break down, which are going to break down right away. So I'm going to dig an area out and put a little potting soil. This is the, I'm not even going to use all this, but I'm just showing you. I use such a small amount, but this plant was growing in potting soil, so I want to make sure it's getting what it's used to. I watered this so it's a little wet. Okay, and now I'm going to press that in. You want to press it in. You want to make sure those roots have really good contact with the soil and leave a little bit of a well. This way when you water, it goes directly to the roots. It's kind of like when I grow in a paper cup and I leave the paper cup in there so I know where it's going. Well, now I'll know it's going in there and I'll water here and it will go to the roots. I'm going to put a little bit of kitty litter in because I didn't go and get any grass clippings or anything. If you don't want to put anything, you don't have to. I grow so much of this without anything. And now that's it. I can get a little bit of water. and just water it a little bit in because I already watered the toad in real good after I did it. And the kitty litter, that will act as a type of mulch. It holds the moisture in a little bit. And see, now I know the water went directly to the roots. You want to make sure you get a bit of good watering when you first plant it. Especially, you saw how I broke it apart from the other four. And that's it. Now, it is on its way, and hopefully this plant will take off. You could put a cover on it if you're afraid some birds or something might bother it, like a wire basket or something. I could drape some tool over it as well, whatever I want to do. And I'll probably come back later and put some irrigation tubing in here so I could put some other type of tent over it if I need it or protection. I don't know if I'll need it. A lot of times for a zucchini, I don't. Okay.